Okay, so today's video is going to center around type 1 versus type 2 diabetes and understanding the difference between the two. So let's get started. So let's look at the normal insulin production first. You may know that cells need fuel in order to perform their cellular functions, and that fuel comes in the form of a sugar molecule called glucose. So after a meal, our meal is digested and the glucose is absorbed into the bloodstream. So after a meal, our blood sugar, our glucose levels rise. Now, if you notice, some of the glucose are trying to gain entrance into the cells, but they keep getting blocked by those closed blue doorways. Those glucose channels are closed. So the pancreas will respond to high blood sugar by releasing insulin. And what insulin is going to do, insulin is going to cause those blue glucose channels to open. So what happens is the insulin will bind to those black insulin receptors. And once that happens, a series of reactions will occur that ultimately cause the glucose channels to open. And now that the channels are open, the glucose can enter the cells. So now that the glucose channels are open, the glucose molecules can simply diffuse into the cells from a high concentration to a low concentration. So as time passes, more and more and more glucose diffuses into the cells. That means that there's less and less and less glucose in the actual blood. The blood sugar is lowering and coming back down to normal. And this process continues until, as you see in the animation, the cells have received their fuel. So now let's look at type 1 diabetes. The problem type 1 diabetics face is that their pancreas does not produce enough insulin. And so we think the cause of this is an inheritable genetic disorder where the immune system has destroyed the insulin producing cells found inside the pancreas. These are called beta cells. And once the beta cells have been destroyed and damaged, they're not able to produce insulin. So the treatment is to inject insulin, whether you use an insulin pump like you see in the picture where over the course of the day insulin is gradually released into the person's blood, or in my animation whether you flat out inject yourself directly with insulin. Now that the, there's insulin in the bloodstream, the insulin can bind to the insulin receptors which causes the glucose channels to open and now the glucose can diffuse into the cells thus lowering the blood sugar back to normal. Type 1 diabetes is usually what's referred to as an early onset disorder because it develops earlier in the person's life, typically around the age of 20 or so. Well, Let's look at type 2 diabetes now. So for type 2 diabetes, you know, one of the problems may be that the person's pancreas does not produce enough insulin. But for most people who are type 2 diabetics, the problem they face is that the insulin receptors are desensitized due to a buildup of fat. In my animation, look at, I just added fat buildup around the insulin receptors. So when they do produce insulin, and, and many people who are, are type 2 diabetics still produce insulin, and they can produce the normal amount of insulin. It's just the insulin cannot bind to the insulin receptors. And so an inactive lifestyle, obesity, poor dietary habits is generally the cause of most individuals who suffer from type 2 diabetes. So if an inactive lifestyle is one of the leading causes of type 2 diabetes, then a change in lifestyle, a shift toward a more fit lifestyle is a, a proper form of treatment. Another form of treatment is the use of medication. Watch in my animation. The medication is designed to kind of break apart and dissolve and break up those fat deposits that are around the insulin receptors. This way, whether the persons produce an insulin naturally on their own or whether they have to inject themselves with insulin, the insulin can now properly bind to the receptors, which allows the glucose channels to one by one open. Now that the glucose channels are open, the high concentration of glucose in the blood can diffuse into the cells, bringing the blood sugar back down to a normal level. 
Type 2 diabetes is often called a late onset disorder because symptoms gradually appear later on in life. Now, even though it says after the age of 30, keep in mind that there are warning signs prior to the age of 30. Because again, this is a this is typically caused by a, a, a poor choice of lifestyle when it comes to inactivity, obesity, and poor diet. So even though they may not be diagnosed with diabetes until sometime in their 30s or 40s, there are plenty of warning signs leading up to that diagnosis. And so here are some of the symptoms that may lead a person to becoming uh, diagnosed as having diabetes. You know, some of these are pretty straightforward, but I do want to kind of translate what some of the other ones are. Person with diabetes suffer, uh, may, uh, one of the main symptoms is that a frequent thirst. This is called polydipsia. Polyphagia is an excess hunger. And keep in mind, if your cells aren't getting glucose, they're going to send out a signal to eat more. And that kind of just exasperates the uh, the problem of having too much glucose. The person feels hungry, so they eat more. Another uh, main symptom of diabetes is polyuria, which is frequent urination. Because as glucose builds up and builds up in the blood, the kidneys remove the extra buildup through, and it's uh, just urinated out of the body. And then glycosuria is excess sugar in the urine. As I just said, the kidneys will remove extra amounts of glucose, and that glucose is urinated out, and therefore a person um, can test their urine for blood sh uh, for sugar in their urine. So I want to show this graph that has two important pieces of information on it. The yellow line shows the percentage of Americans who've been diagnosed with diabetes. And on the far right is the year 2014. And you can see that if we follow the yellow line, which is the percentage of Americans with diabetes, it's about 7% of our, of our population. The blue line is also going up over the past 30, 40 years. And it shows the number of millions of people who are diabetics. And in 2014, that's about 22 million people. Now, both lines show that diabetes in the United States is increasing at a dramatic rate, which is very troubling. So some of the long-term consequences of diabetes. Uh, number one is heart disease. Like the information here says, diabetes dramatically increases the risk of cardiovascular problems, including coronary artery disease with chest pain, heart attack, stroke, the narrowing of arteries, and high blood pressure. You know, nerve damage is another long-term consequence. Excess sugar can injure the walls of the tiny blood vessels that nourish your nerves. Poorly controlled blood sugar can eventually cause you to lose all sense of feeling in the limbs that are affected. Blindness. Blindness is another long-term consequence. Diabetes can damage the blood vessels of the retina, potentially leading to diabetes, uh, excuse me, potentially leading to blindness. Diabetes also increases the risk of other serious conditions, such as cataracts and glaucoma. You can see a cataract in the person's eye in this picture here. Kidney failure is another long-term consequence. The kidneys contain millions of tiny blood vessel clusters that filter waste from your blood. Severe damage can lead to kidney failure or irreversible end-stage kidney disease, which often requires dialysis or even a kidney transplant. Foot sores, nerve damage in the feet, Poor blood flow to the feet increases the risk of various foot complications left untreated Cuts and blisters can become serious infections, which may heal poorly, and in many cases actually have to lead to amputation of, of limbs. So there you go. I wanted to leave this up here for a few moments, just a side-by-side -side comparison of type 1, type 2 diabetes. Keep in mind, both type of, types of diabetes are due to an extra amount of blood glucose, blood sugar in the bloodstream, and the person's inability to control that glucose level naturally. So I hope you found this helpful. Please place your thoughts in the comments below.